Hey, Dr. Eli's Math Industry, and we're going to take a look at the supply and demand. So, when you think of supply and demand, it's not really a mathematical concept, but there is some math in it. So, this is more of an economics class. So, when you think of economics, it's basically a way where we can understand how much resources we have, how much we can calculate all that resources, how much we are using, and how much money we are making off of it. So the economy not only helps us survive, but it also helps us understand what we're using, but also what we're selling, buying, and how we're using our money. You could also put this in a personal finance question or a personal finance class. So, when you think about the economy crashing, you probably hear the news, worry about it for a long, long time. Like, breaking news, the economy is crashing. Such as... So that's what some people think or some people react when the economy crashes or when there's a small amount of decrease in possibly the number of buyers, sellers, demand, price, quality, whatever it is, supply. So when we talk about supply and demand, if you ever ask your parents what it means, they probably said that when there's more stuff in the stores, then the price of that stuff goes high for every unit you get. For example, if I got toilet paper, for example, <laughs> if you were a kid during COVID and you're like, hey, what is supply and demand? Then your parents are like, it happens when prices go up when there's more supply. But does it always go up? So there is a graph that we're going to look at. So here is our graph. Economics people and people that understand it try to use something like this. So there are four things that we have to kind of watch out for. The first one is being the price, denoted by the letter P. That's on the y-axis. There is a letter Q, which means the quantity, and that is on the x-axis. The last two are going to talk about the one that's going down is going to be the demand. And also, the one that's going up is going to be the supplies. So, this graph can show a lot about economics and how everything behaves. So, if you take a look at the graph, there are four things. There is the price, the quantity, the supply, and the demand. The most important roles that are in this graph is the supply can affect huge amounts of it, and the demand can also affect huge amounts of it. Before we start learning about the graph, because if we do, it may be confusing, but the reason why we're talking about S and D is there are two definitions that we have to learn about before we learn this. We have to learn about the law of supply and the law of demand. If we only talk about supply and demand, it doesn't talk about the big picture. So that's why it might be confusing at first, but makes a lot of sense in the end. So we made a chart to differentiate both of them. Let's take a look at Law of Supply. So with Law of Supply, if we take a look at the graph, we see that the line or the slope of the letter S goes up when it reaches the letter P. So P is in the price. So we can say when there are more supplies or when there are more objects being supplied, then the price is going to increase. So, we are going to say, if S goes up, then P goes up. 
The reason why this happens is because people that are supplying and people that are wanting to sell them to buyers is they want to make the most amount of profit they can. Actually, it's called profit. So they want to reach the money that will overtake its uh, breaking point, which is another economic term later. And they want to make the most by selling the most. So that is the law of supply. So if the supplies go up, then the price of them have to go up as well. Now we'll take a look at the law of demand. So from the graph, if you look at the slope of the letter D, it talks about how if the price is going to stay up, then the demand is going to go down. But why does that happen? So we're going to say if the letter P stays up, then we're going to say the demand is going to go down. But the reason why this happens is if we have a lot of stuff, or if we have really expensive stuff, then we can purchase that item, or we can go to another store that sells the same item and the same quality, but at a lower price. So the buyers are going to try to have a lot of demand in something that is a low price, but the same quality of that good. Here's another example. So in the game that I'm playing in Roblox, it's called My Restaurant, and we have a market in the game. And in the game, you have a lot of items that are the same, but have different prices. A lot of the demand is going to go to the most cheapest items because they're at the same quality, but you're getting the same item at the less amount of money. So that is the law of demand. If the price goes up, then the demand will go down until you decrease that price. So now we know the law of supply and the law of demand. The competitive market between the buyers and the sellers. Now we are going to actually look at the graph. So in this video, we're going to only talk about changing the price. So the middle of where the supply and the demand slopes meet is called an equilibrium. We'll denote that as the letter E. And that is the agreement between the buyers and the sellers. The buyers want to get a low price to get the same product, but the sellers want to make a profit at a higher price. How can we agree? So if we change the price, Right now, at the equilibrium, people are going to see that the price is going to be here. That is our starting position. But what happens if we decrease the price? We're going to decrease the price and put P on the bottom right here. Now, we get to put the dots on the bottom. And the thing is, we put bigger dots on the line to understand it more. So we did not move the curves. We only moved the dots to a different point on the graph. We did not move S. We did not move D. We did not move P or Q. 
these cannot be moved at any time. So what it looks like here is, if we decrease the price, the thing is, and have the same supplies, sure enough, there's going to be a big problem. The demand is going to be higher because all we did is we changed the price of the object and they went down. We did not change the supply, but the demand is going to be highly affected. The demand is actually going to go up. So if the demand is up and the price is down, but the supplies are the same, the supplies are going to go out quickly. But if it continues, this is what we like to call a shortage. So, for example, the company cannot make any profit. And once the supply goes out and there's high demand, they can't get more supplies. So this is called a shortage. In order for the company to get back up to the equilibrium, they have to increase the prices so they can still keep up their company smooth as silk. And also, it will decrease the amount of demanders, but the company will still stay alive. So the solution for shortage is increase the price per units. But what happens if we increase the price? So if we start here and the company decides to put P up here, draw a line up here and see what happens. So we put a dot here and put a dot here, but uh-oh, this is not a shortage. Instead, we can understand that the supply is going to be the same, but also the price is going to be really, really high. So that is going to tell you, if we have a store and we have the supplies the same, but the price per unit is going to be a lot higher than normal, then we're going to say that this is called a surplus. Following the law of demand, buyers are not going to buy from a store or a seller that has a high price per unit. So basically, they're going to look at other stores. The supplies are not doing anything. They're sitting on the shelves and we can't sell them. So the only way for us to attract the demanders so they can demand more of that stuff, we have to decrease the price to get back to the equilibrium. So if a company or someone reads this graph, then we can understand if we rise the price or lower the price, we can understand what will happen with our supplies and how we can fix it if we're in a crisis, a shortage, and a surplus. And that concludes the video. I hope this video has helped you understand supply and demand. Thank you for watching Top Analyze Math Industry. Like and subscribe.